So the day that set everything in motion for you guys is obviously um, September 11th, 2001. Um, and I think it'll always be one of those remember when days. I know it is for me and I remember where I was at that very moment. Um, and so looking at it from that respect, when you guys went into action on September 12th, um, looking back, you trained for all of this, but were you ready for it? Were you ready for what you were ready to face or what you ended up facing? Yeah, I think so. We were a mature team. We had uh, the average age was 32. Okay. And we had uh, a lot of the a lot of the guys were married, and they had families. So they were established, and they were established. Yeah. They had uh, solid ground. They had uh, a good family support, like support network. Yeah. So yeah, I think we were ready, and I think we, you know, the question has come up, you know, how how in other words or other ways were you ready? Yeah. And we were ready because we had done training. In that area. In that area. Okay. Uh, prior, four months we were in Uzbekistan training. So it wasn't like you were going into the area blind or the territory blind in any way. No, the only thing that threw us off is we did not really know. Uh, well, we didn't receive the intelligence we needed to receive on General Dostoy. Okay. He was the guy that we met up with. Was he kind of your wild card? He was everybody's wild card. Everyone's wild card. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, our team averaged at that point eight years time in service already, and Bob and four of the other senior sergeants were already special forces combat veterans. So okay. they brought uh, an incredible amount of wisdom and That's just awesome. maturity to that team. Uh, just besides the many deployments that they had had in the Middle East. Beforehand. And then uh, us working in Uzbekistan in that region, along okay. with just a couple other special forces teams the year prior. Okay. Uh, so it was relatively recent. It was. Yeah. Okay. It was in 2000. And we were working, in our case, we were working with the Uzbek Spetsnaz, their special forces. But uh, nationally, that country was already in a knife fight with uh, uh, an Al Qaeda affiliate. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't new, it was just more That's amplified. Right. It, it, yeah. We can say it was the, for me, it was the pinnacle of my career. It right. Was, we actually executed unconventional warfare mm -hmm. that uh, few Green Berets have, ever. have gone into the service, did 20 years, and never, never did that in a combat yeah. operation. We actually did. So following that mission, were how many of you out of your group um, was that? being at their pinnacle of your career, did they choose not to continue in the military after that, or did you guys go on to have very storied and different paths when it came to that? Yeah, but basically everyone stayed in the military. Right, stayed in. We had one guy, uh, Steve, that he, I think a couple of years later. Yeah, they all stayed in the military. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah. the guys, that's I think something else that's incredible about that team is uh, we lost uh, a certain first class Bill Bennett uh, okay. about a year later, still on the same team. Uh, I had moved on along with a couple of the other guys, but Bob and the core of the team was still together and they were instrumental in spearheading uh, the initial operations into Iraq. And is that a rarity and, when you uh, well, deal with that, that caliber and that level that you guys were operating at? Is that a rarity to have that long of a career? Or is it something that it, no, once it's ingrained, Actually, for the most part, you'll get a guy that actually stays in 20 years and is out. He's retired. Okay. Uh, some come in. Now, the guys that came in after us, they wow. came in for the adventure. They wanted to go deploy, Fair do the things that they saw us do. Saw you doing. Right. We knew that we would be taking on other missions yeah. and go to other countries. So yeah. Motivations was, were completely different. Th th exactly. Yeah. We had a long-term goal. Our goal was to, to stay in the yeah. special forces as long as we could uh, do possibly another. As much as sir, go on to retire with 20, 24 years, right. or in the case of Bob and one of the other guys, more than 30 plus years long of service. Years. Most yeah. of that yeah. in special forces, and uh, moving up to different different levels. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of them 
several of them moved on to become instructors okay. at the schoolhouse to pass on some of that knowledge. I always think that's the true mark um, of a passion and a profession is when you yeah. begin to teach. Well, well uh, except for two guys, everyone else made uh, E8 team sergeant, okay. and, uh, commanded a team. Uh, Bart made major, I made uh, CW4, okay. chief, chief officer, officer. four. Okay. Uh, one of the guys made captain. And we had two guys make command sergeant major or sergeant major. Very nice. But the, the, all those guys, you know, at their pinnacles going on after Afghanistan, we yeah. had just one blip on one a long thing career. And then, yeah. uh, you know, they had multiple deployments back to Iraq. Uh, we had several of the guys who were involved in Syria. Uh, okay. So there's a whole legacy uh, that has been that carved continued. out uh, yeah. from that, the 12 guys on that. That's team. amazing. Uh, and actually, Mark, Mark, uh, he and I talked about this. We actually like to document the legacy that the team. It's almost a family tree of yeah. sorts yeah. of you know like this yeah. instigated and this happened all because yeah. of. Well, it's, those it's, first been, it's been good to see that as I was leaving the team, there were new young sergeants mm -hmm. assigned to the team. Yeah. We meet them periodically throughout our careers, and just uh, a month ago, I ran into one of those. He's now a CW4 as well. Uh, and, and it is, is uh, to see those guys continue to grow and have an impact uh, on today's current operations uh, is, is a deep legacy left yeah. by it's the a true mark of that team. Yeah. Uh, several of the, I'm so proud of these guys. There's several of the team, the guys from this team that became team sergeants, along with Bob, you know, they rotated back to Iraq numerous times. But they were instrumental in the key successes that happened that in happened. Iraq as well. And it all with, was with the flipping, culmination of milestones. Yes, with yeah. flipping Al Qaeda out, the Sunni tribes turning around and being allies, stepping up. All these things that are credited to generals, there were Green Beret Green sergeants yeah. involved okay. in that. Yeah, and, sorry, and the core of them were relate back to certainly the fifth group and to the, uh, that is the awesome. 595 team. Very cool. Yeah, it'll always be that, that the, those NCOs are the backbone of the Special Forces. Mm -hmm. And they are because they actually are the frontline guys training right. that oh, yeah. station force. The men on those teams, most of them are now retired. Uh, and that, you know, that, that legacy is passed to yeah. the next generation. The next generation. Uh, and we do hear from some of those guys from time to time. Well, That's they, excellent. Yeah. They'll, you know, they'll reach out on a message or something. Yeah, and in some way, and stay connected. How you guys doing? You know, what are you I doing now? You know? So part, that part kind of, that, of yeah. honoring that, you know, that legacy going forward. Who knows what impact those guys? That they're dealing with some very tough, and complex problems around the yeah. world tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, the teams, these Green Berets, Special Forces, our Special Operations community at large, are, are involved in helping our allies with some very complex. Very. Uh, yeah. challenging problems tonight.